Back everybody, we are in game number two. This is group C for the big one. This is still one of the first matches of the day. The winner of this will move on to fight against TLO next. Uh, currently leading the series, the 1-0 coming all the way from Korea. Playing for the team Samsung Galaxy. It's the blue Zerg player, Solar. Yep, right as the red Protoss, it is Harstum. Alright, and before we talk too much about the map, well, actually, you know what? I am going to talk a little bit about our subs and stuff in a sec, but I got to tell you, I love the way Hearthstone, I, it, it kills me to say this because he lost the game, but he handled that situation so well. There were so many spots where I was like, wow, he's just going to lose that army in a heartbeat, but the force skills were perfect, the control was good, the problem was, if you if you just, if he had never suffered from that run by, I think we would have seen a much stronger game out of Hearthstone, and I really, I think if anyone's underestimating him simply based on the fact that he's a foreigner versus a Korean, you're a fool, because Hearthstone is one of the better foreigners in my honest opinion but um to talk about this because we got a little bit about this yesterday and i want to address it before we get too far into the series today people are like you know why are you talking so much about the subs and donations on this guys there's no corporate sponsor for this tournament that's why you don't see like a kingston hyperx logo we got chairs for gaming as a logo because they're a channel sponsor but i mean there's they didn't exactly drop five thousand dollars in our lap for this tournament so a lot of what we're doing was just saving up getting ready subs donations ad revenue all leading over the last six months to this tournament which is really quite frankly awesome that we were able to do that in the first place and we just want to share this all with you guys if we can make a little bit of it back through through sub uh, and ad revenue and all these things cool great whatever we know we're not going to make five thousand dollars over these three days but we want to make sure that you guys are appreciated for your support because without you we would never have been able to put this event on in the first place so sincerely, thank you every single one of you. And that's why we're going to be doing sub shoutouts throughout the day. Anyways, um, Solar in this particular instance on Overgrowth may find himself in a little bit more of a comfortable spot. We're definitely seeing a lot more Zerg. I, it's hard to call it favoritism, but like, I mean, Zergs are loving this map, bottom line. We're not seeing Protoss players dominate here. We're not seeing Terran players dominate here. I mean, statistically speaking, I could be wrong, but every time I cast this map, it just seems like it's the Zerg guy who wins this game. <laughs> Uh, this is certainly annoying for Solar as he was trying to go a three hatch before a pool and yeah. decides, God darn you, and go through the pool. Yeah, well, I mean, he's got the money to burn. When you have 500 minerals, you might as well. It's no point. <laughs> right? Like, he took that much time. But yeah, it's still a very greedy opener, and unfortunately, Hearthstone not really in a position to do anything about it. You know, he didn't get a forge, he had a gateway, and so I did take a bit of a gamble in that, but it was a correct one. You know what I like about Hearthstone, though? And this is, I think it'll work against him in this particular uh, opening. He's not really the guy to do your typical like 7 gate all in, 8 gate all in, go sentry heavy and try and YOLO to victory. I mean, he jokes around a lot about YOLO and stuff. You see him on Twitter all the time. But I think, um, I mean, he's, he's, he's another one of those Protoss players. You see he really geared towards the macro game a majority of the time. His all ins are strong when he does do them, but I just, you don't, you don't Yo. see him do them all the time. Rifkin, look at the mini map. Oh no, it moved. Never mind. God darn it. What? Because <laughs> the overlord was right on top of the nexus. You actually couldn't see that the overlord was there on the mini map. Oh. But it too much red. Too many dots. Yeah, they like, didn't show up at all. It should be like changing to purple at least, right? Because the red and the blue. Colors. Sure. Yeah. Uh, too many colors don't mix. Too many colors don't mix. Make purple. Third player enters the game. Yes, exactly. In history, you've gotten color things about color wrong, but that one I'm pretty sure is correct. Oh, black and... That wasn't even on our channel. That was in Copa America. Leave it be. Yeah, it doesn't count. It doesn't what count. happens in Copa America stays in Copa America, except uh -huh. for when we reference it and constantly bring it up on our own channel. Then it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of which, Copa America will be going later tonight, guys. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, but Harstam just going to throw some gateways to the wall. You know, four gates right now. Ooh. Wait, there's oh. the Overlord. Why did the Whoa. camera jerk hey, me up hey, there? Hey, Rifkin. Hey, Rifkin. <laughs> How about the snow gate we all lynch it? Well, no. This is this is what I was saying. Like, this is not his typical MO, and I think this is going to work out really nicely for him. This is why I said like, I was a little bit worried that he might not go for it, and he goes for the macro game on this map. But if, know, he goes, if he goes heavy all in, well, not even all in, but just if he goes heavy aggression to knock down a third, this is what sends you ahead as a Protoss player. I wonder... I do. I wonder if, well, he didn't actually take a second gas, so maybe not. Uh, I was wondering if it was a plan because the overload was sniped, but actually looking at it, I think it was predetermined to happen on this map, but that would have been cool, whatever. Uh, I think it is going to be effective, you know, whatever the case may be. There's only lings out in the field. Now, Solar does yeah. know this is coming. I think maybe an overload is over to the right. He saw the probe come down, or I'm not sure. Well, you see the cutter right here a little bit. 
I mean, the one thing that's going to work out well for Harsim in this regard, guys, is while Solar's on three bases, he's on the same drone count as there are probes. So, not exactly with a big income advantage, and he has to devote every bit of larva right now into lings, because there's no roaches, there's no hydras. He's got to stop this attack. He can't afford to lose his third. He knows it. Harsim also not getting too dedicated with this as well. You know, he could have sniped the queen, but the cost of all his stalkers. So, still trying to play it safe. This could get... This Worst could get speed. increasingly more dangerous for Solar. I mean, uh, whoa, speed well, just finished. Harsim's actually not going too zealot heavy. I think it's a bit of a problem, though. Yeah. Uh, he could use yeah. the pylons to maybe limit surface area here a little bit, but yeah, as we uh, see. Harsim just loses. I mean, game of Lins depends so much on surprise and catching yeah. your opponent while they're droning, and Solar Deleuze is coming from, like, step number one, because they had over over the natural or the main for so long and saw no gases, you or not, no second gas, rather. You know what could work out here, just strategically speaking at the back end of this? While this failed and mm -hmm. kind of really screws Harsim, Harsim's TVP is, I think, one of his favorite matchups. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if he does lose this, it might work out better for him to fight from the loser's bracket, I guess, and maybe catch him a little more fatigued later Whoa. on. And Solar's worst matchup is ZVZ. Yeah, this is actually kind of interesting. TLO! So. It's your time to shine, man. Yeah, I mean, Hearthstone, uh, I, don't, I don't think he's going to be able to hold this off too much longer, but... I, uh... Just, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I gotta tell you, Hearthstone versus Supernova, I think, is a lot better set for Harstam in the first place. I mean, if you guys remember, we had a, a show match that was cancelled due to timing and some unfortunate coincidences, um, where it was supposed to be Harstam versus 4GG, and a big part of this is because he loves TBT. It was originally Harstam versus Daishi, actually. He wanted to show the world that he was such a badass he could take on any Terran player. Um, so, you know, PBZ, if it's not a strong suit, especially on the North American server fighting against Solar, I think he's got a pretty good fighting chance against Supernova. Hmm. Hmm. But of course, he's still going to have to fight a Zerg player either way, ultimately, at the end. But here's my thought process on this, right? For Harstam's point of view, guys, and this sounds crazy, hear me out. I'm not trying to wish anyone well or bad or whatever. But let's say Harstam beats Supernova. And let's say uh, Solar beats TLO. Then Harstam gets to fight TLO on the European server. Then it's a PVZ without lag. And maybe that's his best case scenario to get out of the group. I don't know. I mean, the game's certainly not over yet. But it's not like Harstam's in an amazing spot right now. He's gonna follow it up with a Sentry Immortal Lin, which is not that surprising, but probably ill-fated. Uh, actually, throws on a Forge, so maybe not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, by the time he's gonna push out, like the, the Forge won't have done anything for him, I guess, unless uh, he's just using a cannon back at home. Is he actually trying to take a third? I don't know. I mean, it just—I don't think it'll work. If he's got a pretty he's sizable army, building number probes. Okay, like, yeah, no, okay. I don't know what the port is for then. But I mean, he, he walls us off. So, I mean, here's the thing. Like, his army is so good against roaches. I don't know about these lings, though. It's going to take a lot of force fields. Roach, uh, uh, oh, that immortal. Uh, I mean, the thing about lings is they do dissipate very quickly. But that's still a lot of lings he's going to have to chew through. Yeah. I like that he didn't overreact, though. I mean, right now, Solar is trying to bait up force fields, and that's it. Uh, oh, Burrow's there's actually no observer. In, oh, yeah, Burrow's gonna work out here really nicely. Oh, Burrow is such actually... a good counter to force fields, guys. If you are a protest player, you're struggling with force fields, just go Burrow earlier. It seriously <laughs> makes the world of difference. Because, you know, a lot of these pushes, as we see, they don't usually have an observer with them. You know, you can't really afford to squeeze it out because you've been pumping immortals like crazy. Yeah, he could technically chrono one out and maybe send it across the field, but that's not gonna happen until he realizes there's already Burrow in play, and by then it's usually too late. Yeah, he's even getting the burrow movement, so when you get burrow them. movement, it's no longer about the surprise, no observer. It's about getting under the force fields and popping underneath them, and it's still very effective. So, uh, by the time Harsum pumps an observer out, it'd be too late. Use burrow, there you go. Yeah. Of course, uh, if burrow had a timer on it, so that the roaches like, had to come up for air or something, <laughs> maybe it'd be different. But, of course, you can just burrow indefinitely, so wait for those force fields oh. to wear off and then come back. Oh, he... It goes into a vision, that's a bit of a mistake. So they would have had a really sick surround, um, and Harsim would not have seen it. Uh, still buying time. I uh, do the like observer that is making the way across. Here it comes. I do like that he's setting up for this sort of sandwich move, though. Heart Solar, as you guys can see by the minimap, he keeps dipping in and out with his army because he's trying to go ahead and catch Solar on the back end. Or, sorry, not Solar, Harsim, when those force fields come down. But damn if Harsim doesn't have a lot of force fields right now. 15 centuries. This is yeah. insane. I mean, you, uh, maybe he could actually make something out of this. Broach Burrow is barely, or the movement rather, is barely not done. Yeah, this fine clock is going to be a bit of a nuisance. I love that he's not taking the fight here, guys. It's so easy, and so often you'll see Protoss players just kind of aim move into this, but if he does, the Zealots are in range of the Roaches, and the Zealots can't shoot the Roaches back. So this works out pretty well the way he's layering the force fields. It's a lot of force fields, but he's got a lot of force there fields to go. burn. 
But the, oh, oh, the shark attack! The shark are. attack! Jeez. What the heck? No contest after that Roach Burrow. Well played. All right, Solar is going to take the first game, guys, and we are going to be, or for, sorry, his second series, but the first series for him. We'll be moving into a ZBZ now with Solar versus TLO in the winner's 